two points for Bird, six for Irving. At this point, Danny Ainge claims that Bird told Irving to retire, which led to this. Damn! <laughs> Whoa, I said, whoa, what's good with y'all boys, man, I'm back with another kid reaction, baby, what's good, family, I miss y'all, man, I definitely miss y'all, mm, my bad, fellas, I miss y'all, man, my mom did some crazy stuff, man, and it wound up breaking, so, man, I'm not even going to get into that story, you feel me, I'm not even going to get into that, we gonna, we going to get straight into the video, but first of all, if y'all new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, we about to chase, we almost about to hit 4,000 subscribers, man, we about to hit 4,000, so let's get into this video, man, seven stories that prove Larry Bird was the greatest trash talker of all times, of all time, you feel me, but mine's, <sighs> you know, you got Kevin Garnett, Lance Stevenson, just in this generation, you feel me? Like that's that's just my all-time like the people I've seen be the most disrespectful. You feel me? Uh, Patrick Beverly, <laughs> you feel me? But they say Larry used to talk that mess when he was, you know, back then. So he was out there scoring, getting buckets, and talking trash. Man, Larry had to be a crazy dude, man. So if y'all, like I said, man, if y'all new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'm not even gonna hold y'all too long. Let's get straight into this video, baby. Let's go. What's up, guys? Mike here, and today we are going to be talking about Larry Bird. Now, Larry Bird was a three-time NBA champion. He was a three-time MVP. But perhaps most importantly, he was the world's best trash talker. So here are seven stories that prove that Larry Bird was a trash-talking legend. Okay. Number seven, he constantly insulted the people guarding him. If you okay. want to get into a player's head, there is no better way than to trash talk your opponent and then back it up. That's and a fact. Larry Bird was the king of trash talking his man and then backing it up. For instance, he once scored 40 points and had a triple double against a young Sean Kemp. Oh. In the game, Kemp, who grew up in Indiana. Hold on, baby. A tough Sean Kemp. <laughs> that dude, right? <laughs> they used to bang out back in the day. My man Sean Kemp. You know when you young in the league. People don't be knowing this, though. When you first come in the league, and even though you're a star, y'all be getting exposed when y'all first come in the league, but you can't knock them. They rookies, bro. They rookies. Zion got cooked when he first came in the league. Zion Williams? I forgot who he got cooked by, but he got cooked, bro. He got cooked. Larry Bird shot. Bird sunk the shot, and running back up the court told Kemp, I'm Hold on, let me look at the crowd, player man. from Indiana. In a game against the 76ers in 1984, Bird found himself oh, wow, matched up against quality. Julius Irving and dominated him. As he scored point after point, Bird kept repeating two numbers. I gotta do a reaction on Julius Irving too, bro. And the number of points Irving shot. Had. By the Larry? end of the third quarter, those two numbers had become 42 and 6. 42 points for Bird, 6 for Irving. At this point, <laughs> Danny Ainge claims that Bird told Irving to retire, which led to this. Damn! <laughs> and perhaps his that hit my man heart, bro. That hit my man heart. After you drop forty or forty-two points on the dude, yo, shorty, go ahead and retire, bro. This, this not your game no more. This mine. My man out there throwing them jiffies, bro. <laughs> His most memorable moment came in a game against the Pacers around Christmas. Before the game, Chuck Person, known as the Rifleman, right. told reporters that the Rifleman is coming and he's going bird hunting. Okay. This, Larry approached Person before tip off, saying, Hey, Chuck, I have a present for you. Ooh. He then waited until Person was subbed out, spotted up right next to where he was sitting, and drained a three. As the ball went in, Bird turned to Person and said, Merry effing Christmas. Ooh, Number six, I like that dude, bro. Coaches. As Larry Bird became more confident, trash talking players just became too easy. So he began to trash talk coaches. Against the Bulls, Bird found himself matched up against Ben Porquette, a noticeably poor defender. He took exception to this and expressed to then Bulls coach Doug Collins, Ben Porquette 
Are you effing kidding me? Right. Before dropping 33 points in the first half against the Pistons, a young Dennis Rodman tried his best to stop Bird. So oh yeah, that's he tough, bro. Trying to deny him when he did. Still, Bird found a way to get into Rodman's head, screaming at his teammates, "I'm wide open." Even as Rodman was attached to his head, <laughs> and he acted as if he was wide open too, sinking four oh. straight shots in Rodman's face before asking Pistons coach Chuck Daly, "Who's guarding me, Chuck?" Is anyone guarding me? Mm. Better get someone on me, or I'm gonna go for six. And Facts. scoring at will against the Jazz, Bird sunk a shot and said, When he ran by the bench, he goes, that's a heat check. Before turning to Jazz coach Frank Layden and saying, Hey Frank, don't you have anybody on that bench who can guard me? To his credit, <laughs> Layden responded with, <laughs> Frank looked down the bench and goes, No. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, three-point shootout king. In the 1986 season, the NBA added the three-point contest to its All-Star Weekend for the first time. Known as one of the game's deadliest shooters, Larry Bird was of course chosen to compete. And while now, many see the three-point contest as a friendly competition, right. Bird saw it as just another way to prove his greatness. Leading bro. up to the event, Bird spent weeks practicing from the Hold five on, spots bro. he would be- Larry Bird mental was crazy back then, bro. I mean, I think the game overall back then was way more competitive than now. You feel me? Way more competitive. They competed on three-point shots, probably dunk contests and all. Everything just kind of friendly now. People want to be buddy-buddy. You see what, what KD did with the trades. He was with Westbrook, and he went to Golden State. You feel me? You team up with the people they play. It's more, it just seems like, I'm not going to say it's, it's more about somebody actually trying to get a championship. It's not about somebody staying home and being like, yo, I'm going to rock this out with y'all. I'm going to stay loyal. Only person that I know that's really like that now is Damon Lillard, you feel me? Stan loyal to Portland, he might get traded. It'd be hard dealing with that, bro, in this new generation. Definitely hard. Be taking his shots, making sure he was at his best for the contest. While Bird was already supremely confident in his shot, this practice convinced him that there was no way he could lose to anyone. And he made sure his opponents in the contest knew this. We had a three-point contest at the All-Star break. And Larry walks in and says, I hope all you guys in here are thinking about second place because I'm winning this. In other words, he was saying that first place was already locked up. And it was, as Bird began his final round by draining 11 threes in a row. He mm. won the contest while still on the middle rack and even showboated by banking in the money ball from the right wing. As hey, he finished Bird his last round, bro. he raised his arms and yelled, I am the three-point king and he was, because the next year bird won the contest again throughout the entire shootout He never removed his warm-up jacket demonstrating his unwavering confidence and again He called his victory beforehand telling Dale Ellis. There's no need to talk this time We all know who's going to win and in 1988 in pursuit of his third three-point shootout championship in three tries bird jacket on sunk his final money ball to give him his third straight title and the official crown of the NBA's three-point king. Number four, welcome to the league. By right. all accounts, Larry Bird loved to trash talk all of his opponents. Mm. But he had a special place in his heart for trash talking rookies. While recalling a game against Bird in his rookie season, Clyde Drexler summed up just what it was like for a rookie to be matched up against Larry Bird. I was guarding in my rookie year. He looked at me and he goes, you can't stop me. And I looked at him and I said, gosh. Boy, you're, you're so confident. You're <laughs> confident. You're, you're a rookie. You don't know anything. Right. After that statement, Bird began to rain in shot after shot over Clyde. Mm. Ending with... Coach took me out the game. He walks by and he's laughing at me. <laughs> in his first game as a Hawk, <laughs> Dominique Wilkins went to shake Bird's hand at the opening tip. Bird looked at Wilkins stone-faced and ignored him. Later in the game, Wilkins knocked Bird to the floor on a drive oh. to the basket. Larry got up and said, I like you, Rob. Got guts, but I'm still going to go for it. That's tough. Said, that's tough, Larry. That's tough, Larry. I like you, rookie. You've got guts, but I'm still going to go for 40 on you tonight. Mm. He was one point off of his promise, scoring 39 on Dominique while shooting 18 for 22 from the floor. In a game against the Pacers, another notorious trash talker, Reggie Miller, Reggie Miller. to get into Bird's head at the free throw line during his rookie year. Bird stopped. Looked at Reggie and said, Rook, I am the best effing shooter in the league. In the league. Understand? Larry is savage, bro. Tell me something. He 
then, of course, proceeded to sink his next free throw. And this trash talk did not only extend to rookies, it extended to college players too. In preparation for the 1984 Olympics, the college-filled United States team led by Michael Jordan played against right. a team of current pros to practice. During the warm-ups, a ball bounced from the Olympic team's end to the pros' end. Michael Jordan chased after it, and then... The ball happened to be picked up by Larry Bird. And Michael went up a few feet away from Larry Bird and held out his hands. And Bird took the ball and fired it back down the court over Jordan's head. Oh. As if to say, you're not only not getting this ball, I don't give a damn who you are. Number three stay true to his word. Throughout his career, Larry Bird earned the reputation as one of the greatest clutch players in the NBA's history. Countless times the Celtics placed the ball in his hands and countless times he came through. As his teammate ML Carr said, Because you know if you ever got in trouble, give the ball to Larry and get out of the way. <laughs> and after now I'm going line, to work, man. Scoring in the clutch became too easy for Bird. He wanted more. I get a charge and I'll tell someone on the opponents and the team that I want to hit the last second shot and do it. So on December 30th, 1986, in the final moments of a tie game against the Sonics, Bird walked out of the huddle to the man guarding him, Xavier McDaniel, and said, Yeah, he said, I'm going to get it right here. I'm going to shoot it right in your face. And that's exactly what he did. Oh, life, man, different, bro. In fact, he not only shot the game winner over McDaniel, he also shot it over McDaniel's teammate, too, proving that not even two players could stop Bird in the clutch. And while this shot was incredible, the next season, Larry managed to top it. In the second game of the 1998 season, the Celtics trailed the Bulls by three with just seconds remaining. The right. ball was passed to Bird, who sunk a three to tie the game, but his coach had called a timeout. No matter, Bird proceeded to sink a running two three level? to tie the game, sending it into He hit two clutch threes, bro. Just two seconds remaining. Come on, the man. Again trailed when he looks at uh, the bench and says, uh, hey guys, when I come back after the timeout, I'm going to go right to the same spot. And I'm going to kick it in. He told Washington, I'm going to get the ball. You can guess what happened next. And I don't know. Where do we go? Right, it's going to go to Bird. He's got All right, shot. different, bro. Number two, the game was just too easy. As I said before, Larry Bird often found the game's most crucial Left hand. moments to be too easy. And when the stakes were even lower, such as an average regular season game, the Bird pass. would find more difficult ways to keep himself motivated. For instance, according to Danny Ainge, Larry used to come in the locker room, he'd be getting his ankles taped and he'd say, you know, hey ball boy, run in and go find the scoring record in this building. You know, he needed those kind of challenges. Now, perhaps the most extreme example of this came on Valentine's Day in 1986. The Celtics had just finished a long road trip. So Larry decided to go out with a bang. One thing about Larry Bird, Bird game, bro. I don't know, like somebody actually playing in front of him, but his game seemed so slow, like a Paul Pierce type of game. But he just, he's so effective and he just so, we all know Bird not that athletic, you feel me? But he's a bucket, bro. He's a bucket. And that's, 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 that's definitely crazy, man. So I love like, slow players but that can get bucked because it takes skill to do what you do you feel me you just can't go out there and use your speed or your athleticism and athleticism people and speed people they get some weak buckets sometimes even though they're not even that talented you feel me so you just but for you to be that skill and you slow you're not athletic bro you're you really on a different level like you really it really takes you practice and practice to get to a certain weight bro like, they really be the people that out there, like, that's out there really working. Facts. And the media, too. We were all standing around waiting to leave. And he said, tomorrow night's the last game of the trip. I'm going to play this one left-handed at least, at least through three quarters. Oh, yeah, I remember this. They played the game left hand. The Blazers with just Bro, that's tough. Hand, except for jump shots, which is exactly what he did. With both teams aware of his intentions, Bird scored 22 points with just his left hand, ending the night with 47 total points along with 14 rebounds, 11 assists, and the game-winning shot. And number one, he should have gone for 60. On March 3rd, 1985, Larry Bird's teammate Kevin McHale broke the Celtics franchise scoring record by scoring 56 points in a game. However, right. he took himself out of the game with just a few minutes remaining. Bird later told the media, he should have stayed in there, should have got 60. The two had a <laughs> friendly rivalry. And Larry could not believe that Mikhail would take himself out with such an obvious milestone in sight. So, right. because he was Larry Bird, he decided to go for it himself. Just oh. nine days later, while matched up against the Hawks and Dominique Wilkins, Bird put on one of the greatest regular season performances in NBA history. As Doc Rivers put it, He was calling shots off the glass. <laughs> Who's next? Where you at Look at my man, Young Doc. Oh, yeah. And he just made one after another. 
Yes, on this night, Bird was on fire, sinking almost impossible shot after shot. In the fourth quarter, he found himself with 52 points oh, and man. then made this. A shot so impressive that the players on the Hawks bench fell over in disbelief. These Hawks players would eventually cheer on Bird, a player mm. on the opposing team. Then, with 56 points and a chance to break Mikhail's record, Bird went over to the Hawks and said, He called it. Uh, he said, Rainbow, uh, trainers laugh. Meaning, that's where he would shoot it. Right. The trainers laugh. Bird proceeded to catch the ball and do this, sinking a shot before falling into the trainer's lap. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Hawks players high-fived each other, appreciating the NBA history they were watching. Now, this shot was waved off due to a foul, though Bird sunk both free throws and ended the game with 60 points on a buzzer mm. beater, a Celtics franchise record that still stands. And thank you guys for watching, and man, does that not make you miss the way the NBA used to be? When oh, trash talking was basically encouraged and not fined? For any future NBA prospects watching this video, trash talk we love to see it and as always to my loyal subscribers i love you guys your support motivates me to make videos you're you're all right that's enough you feel me but yo larry bird was different bro we all can say larry bird was different bro yo low key was amazing i'm 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 his newest biggest fan bro newest biggest fan bro and that's a fact man oh man man send me more reactions Somebody told me react to more Larry Bird videos, but send me more, man. If y'all new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, man. Let's chase this 4K, man. We grind every day. I'm back, baby. I'm out.